All right, so I'm going to try this again. I uh, tried to make this video a moment ago, but apparently the mic was off again. I guess i got to get used to that. But anyway, just uh, uh, on the ECM link group on um, Facebook, somebody was needing uh, some help looking at a log. Uh, a gentleman with the uh, Gallant VR4, if you had a stock ECU on it, um, I guess playing around with the bis screw, got it to work fairly decently. Throwing in ECM link um, in the car, or ECU with ECM link, and uh, not running quite the same. Uh, so I guess I'll start off first by saying that uh, anytime you've got a stock ECU, it may, it may run fine with that. Uh, well, just because you put a stock ECU in it uh, with the ECM link in it, uh, with the chip, don't expect that you've still got a stock ECU, uh, even if you've got the stock settings. You're, you're buying this program to tune your car to make adjustments uh, for performance purposes, obviously. Um, so everything's not going to run exactly the same just because you throw it in and you've got some base settings uh, that are thrown in there. Uh, you're going to have to do some tweaking. Uh, so it's not always going to turn out 100% perfect as soon as you just throw it in there. Uh, that being said, I guess we'll go ahead and get into it. First thing I'm noticing uh, on here is that there's some parameters that are not being logged. Uh, I went through, I looked at any captured values, displayed values. Uh, we don't have a wide band being logged, no wide band factor. Of course, we can't have that one without a wide band anyway. Um, no long term fuel trim low. Uh, that's not, you know, make or break it, uh, but it's nice to have that one. Um, ISC position, so we can't tell, you know, if the bis screw needs some adjustment, uh, whatever the case, it'd be nice to have that one. Uh, ignore some of these, like the VE, uh, IET. Uh, he, this is one that could be added, uh, the ECU boost, it could be added uh, to, to capturing as far as that's concerned. Boost, I mean, there's no, you can ignore that one, there's no map sensor. This is a MAF uh, car, uh, so not run on speed density. But we'll, we'll go one, uh, one by one as far as the tabs are concerned. But first and foremost, let's just drag it on over uh, to where the car's actually running. Uh, so we've got some some data to actually look at. Kind of hard to look at any data when it's when it's uh, not running, other than the actual settings that are in the car, uh, as far as that's concerned. So uh, first and foremost, the first thing I'm seeing is that the RPM is a little bit high. I uh, can't tell if that's either going to be one of two things: either uh, boost leak, uh, could, or could possibly uh, need some adjustment of the bis screw uh, somewhere. Kind of hard to tell that because I have no ISC position to log there. So. Um, he, the gentleman, gentleman was uh, discussing as far as his O2 uh, sensor is not cycling. Uh, if we're looking here, the uh, voltage is pretty low, 0.02. Uh, uh, this usually is a pretty good indication to me if it's that low uh, that the sensor may be dead. Uh, keeping in mind that you know with the Gallant VR4, it's using a ECU from a uh, first gen DSM. Uh, the coolant temps have to normally be a little bit higher before it's going to cycle. Uh, we're starting with a cold start. It's 97 degrees. Uh, but I did scroll. I, I did look this over, obviously, before we started the video, and I did get over. We're, we get it on up to temps. Uh, still no cycling. It is bumping up a little bit as far as the voltage. Uh, could just need some fuel. Um, it, it may just be running lean. Kind of hard to tell because, um, again, have no wideband to work on, and we're stuck in closed loop. Has enough airflow uh, to be getting into closed loop, have enough coolant temp. Uh, it should be there uh, or fairly close to that. Uh, this is on where it would be good in my last video where I was talking about narrowband uh, simulation. Can be bad, but this is one of those instances where we can test. Uh, if we had a wideband sensor installed, we could simply enable narrowband simulation. If it starts cycling, then we know we've got a bad O2 sensor. Uh, being that we have no wideband being logged, kind of hard to tell that on this one. Um, but I do see a lot of fluctuation with the uh, airflow, or I'm sorry, air fuel ratio estimate here is going up and down a lot. Could possibly need some smoothing. I don't know if there's any sort of problems with the uh, mass airflow sensor. Um, not really seeing any problem with the idle, just other than just idling high. The airflow is looking pretty decent. Uh, battery voltage, which is always a good one. Uh, to be logging here, 14.1. That's, that's decent output as far as the uh, alternator uh, voltage as far as that's concerned. Um, other than that, I will say the TPS uh, could probably uh, use some adjustment. 0.51, that's you know, fairly low. Uh, can't tell if uh, if it's accurate on the top end because there's no uh, no real throttle position sensor change, maybe just slight 
changes there, but we'll go through them one by one as far as the tabs. We'll start off with RPM. Uh, I've got a target idle of 850. Uh, we're above that. Uh, again, we can en enable the TPS adjustment uh, as far as getting our TPS voltage in line uh, and possibly our throttle position. Uh, don't know on that one yet, but either way, we need to get some uh, TPS adjustments done there. Um, I did notice that the auto switch is functioning correctly. Uh, I was trying to scroll. You know, we do have some fluctuations there once he's hitting the throttle, so we know the idle switch is working correctly. As far as that's concerned, that was uh, being simulated by the throttle position sensor, I believe, in the RPM tab uh, right here. Uh, so we're so we're okay there as far as that's concerned. No other real problems here at the moment that I, that really jump out at me. Uh, as far as the fuel is concerned, looks like we have zero dead time. I'm going to assume that we're probably on stock injectors. Um, bring, even though you can't see it in the log, if I'm clicking calculate, uh, as far as the injector size, I'm showing 387 uh, cc's. I was telling me it's probably stock. Uh, of course, usually when I'm looking at a log from someone else, those values may not always match what they actually have input there. Uh, but everything else is zeroed out. I am seeing fuel cut down here uh, as one of the... Uh, functions of ECM link, uh, which is helpful, um, but it does tell me we've got some updated software and firmware um, in here. Uh, timing is zero, math comp is zeroed, even though we're using a stock mass airflow sensor. Uh, math clamp, <coughs> excuse me, math clamp, that's not even being used. Speed density, while we've got some adjustments made here, I don't know, because we're not even using speed density. It's not going to hurt anything because we're not using this function right now anyway, but maybe it was a uh, uh, speed density car at one time. Uh, not sure as far as that's concerned, but we can ignore it being that it's not used. Uh, nothing being used here, nothing with idle air. Now, if he's got a uh, blow off valve bending to atmosphere, he may want to enable this one. Uh, again, no wideband. We're not simulating a narrow band O2 sensor. Uh, no analog. Uh, these, these numbers here are fairly reasonable. I would probably leave them where they're at. Um, fuel pressure. Uh, Solenoid activation stock, EGR stock, boost. Uh, we're not using boost control from ECM Link, obviously. Uh, these are looking somewhat decent. If you want to be warned about these, uh, you know, too much knock or your coolant temps getting too high, you could probably change these numbers, lower, lower them a little bit. Coolant offset uh, is left stock. Um, Nothing really here to be concerned about. Um, only one we're really ignoring here is the EGR and the ECU inputs. Uh, nothing being uh, added here. I will say that I'm kind of wondering why we've got uh, the the lock for the intake temperature and the barometric pressure sensor. Basically saying, hey, I'm not using this anymore. Quit looking for me to be, uh, you know, as a value to look at. Uh, this one doesn't need to be locked because it's a stock mass airflow sensor, to my knowledge anyway. Um, and I am looking at the readings from the mass math raw. Uh, they're all around values, which would be uh, output from a stock mass airflow sensor. So it is telling me that you know we are using a stock mass airflow sensor, and it is also indicated in math comp uh, that we're using the stock mass airflow sensor. Um, but other than that, I'd maybe uncheck that one. Uh, if we jump over to direct access, everything here is stock, so uh, nothing nothing changed there as far as that's concerned. So. Really, we need to get some more uh, data uh, put in here. We need a wide band. Um, we need an ISC position. Those are our two main ones, so we can see where we're at. Um, but I'm I'm just going to assume that probably the stock stock O2 sensor is probably dead. Might need to get cha that changed out as well. But other than that, that's really everything I'm seeing. Um, of course, as as always, if you got questions, feel free to uh, reach out and holler at me. Uh, until next time, you guys have a good one.